In 2013, there was an enormous influx of Bigfoot sightings in one key area of rural Kentucky. This sparked the curiosity and successful investigation led by 2014 Bigfoot Investigator of the Year, Thomas Markham, who has lived in this area most of his life. During this investigation, some crucial evidence was collected and documented. Tracks, track castings, stick formations and a game camera photograph were all presented to the public in the original film Bigfoot tracking a legend but this was only a small part of a much bigger more compelling story new and critical evidence about this creature is being found on a regular basis the investigation of this creature has been ongoing over the years the legend is still being tracked. It's still out there. We now join Thomas in the research area as he looks for evidence and sets up game cameras. I'm back in the sighting area from 2013. A sighting in which I investigated and I was able to find uh, a track line. I was able to find lots of broken branches and a few stick structures. This is the first time I've been back in about five or six months, so I'm hoping it's still in the area and I can find evidence of it. I think I'm going to place a game camera right here close where I, where I can shoot this little, little flat. Down in that area is actually where I found the tracks, a little bit further to the left, but found the actual track line I should say and the stick structure but I'm going to place a game cam right here setting up this first game cam while well, I come down here and laid my backpack and my camera next to this old fallen log and I thought at first I thought this was just uh, some mushroom but if you look that is some kind of palette with teeth in it uh, I don't exactly know what it's from I'm going to bag it up 
and find out. I hopefully find out. Maybe somebody can tell me what it is and why it was laying on top of this stump. Or this log, rather. That's kind of interesting. It looks like it's old, but still kind of different. On the hike to set up another game camera, Thomas finds possible evidence that the creature has been in the area. Well, here is a big old pile of poo, which hard to say it could be a bear. But it sure is definitely a big old pile. An old track of some kind. It's awful big to be be a bear. It could have been a person, maybe. I don't know. It's old. There's another one on this side of it. Hmm. Now these are old tree breaks, but uh, right there's one, and then you got right here, right beside it. There's one, and then if you go up this little tree, right there, that one right there is also whittled on somehow. And this is real close to where I found those teeth a while ago. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep looking around. I don't know really how old. I'd hate to try to guess how old that right there is. But that's uh, right at six foot high. That's, uh, that's right at six foot high right there. I found this break right here and that is about eight foot high and that hits old don't get me wrong but now what would break it that high bring it down stick it behind this other little branch and what would be the chance of the wind doing that this I just don't see it I don't know exactly what did it but that's uh, I think that's kind of odd and stands out to some degree. Here is a uh, nice little area that would be good for tracks. Uh, I have crossed here myself a few times. It's usually pretty soft. I don't see anything. Maybe some old deer tracks. But I'm going to keep looking down this way a little bit. See what we can find, maybe. This appears to be an old track, but I think it's actually an old bear track because if I look right here, ouch, that there looks like an old bear track to me. It could be a handprint, though, it's hard to say. It's old and washed out, so I was going along this creek looking for a looking for tracks and things like that. I've worked up a pretty good sweat so far. Second game cam has been put up. I'm about killed. I've hiked quite a bit today. I've not really found a whole lot, but uh, I don't stop the mountains from being steep. After setting up a few more game cameras, Thomas leaves the research area and returns home. After arriving home, Thomas contacts anthropologist Dale Drennan in hopes that he can shed some light on the found teeth. Could they be from a primate? After some study, Dale was able to provide some information. Dale had this to say. The teeth are in a condition called lophodont. The enamel is folded into ridges. This is a condition common in certain types of herbivorous animals, not in carnivores and not in primates. This is not a human and it is not a primate. Together, Dale and Thomas concluded the teeth were most likely from a deer or similar animal.
Thomas returns to the research area to collect the game cameras and search for more evidence that the creature is still in the area. Okay. Out of breath, that little hill got me. I've come back from my game cams. They've been out about 60 days. Roughly, maybe four, somewhere between 40 and 60. Uh, I've not even been back over here, so I'm going to get my game cams. I'm going to do a little bit of exploring too and see if I can find anything. I'm traveling in the same way I always come. Everything's a little bit greener. It's been one year since my dad had his sighting in this area. Might be maybe just possibly just a few days over one year. We've had a lot of rain the last few days, so any tracks we should find should be should be fresh if we can find anything. I've seen some deer tracks so far, but that's about it. The first game cam is now in my backpack. The batteries on it were dead, which could be a good sign that uh, it took a lot of pictures because it had fresh batteries in it. So I won't know until I get home. So I don't have no way of checking them out here in the mountains. I know they make a thing that where you can check them, but I don't have one. Now I'm going to go on to game cam number two. This is where this is the big exit uh, the Bigfoot creature made. Uh, probably close to a year ago, seven or eight months ago anyways. But it looks like the, a few more sticks have been added to it. I've looked at it and touched it, but I'm not really, I, don't, I wouldn't want to tear it down or nothing like that. But uh, I'm going to get a little closer and let you look at it a little, a little closer up. <clears throat> See how they put them in that one main fork there was just a couple best I can remember but of course the ground's too hard here to see any tracks or anything and uh, that pole right there it's it's been placed there it's not there's no root system it's not broke off or nothing it's just been placed there so it's kind of interesting I don't really know what it means but all right, I'm gonna continue on toward the game cams. We made it to game cam number two. Let's see if it's still taking pictures or the batteries are dead. The second game cam is in my backpack. Uh, the batteries were dead on it to the point that it wouldn't take pictures, but I was able to power it up and see that it did have I couldn't tell if it was 200 and some or 2,000 and some pictures. Either way, there, there's pictures on it, so I won't really know what we captured until, you know, after I get back home and put it on the computer. Now I'm going to explore a little bit, see if I can find any tracks or, or anything. And then I'm going to go back a different direction that I've, I've not really explored much. Uh, good Lord willing. But I got to check right down here next to this creek there was a big pile of scat before I assumed it was a bear it looked like bear but uh, I'm gonna go check it out I just heard something across the creek I heard brush pop now I don't know if it's a deer or what but I'm gonna try to find out Sure don't see anything. Now something popped just like you like uh, like you step on a down branch or something it popped. And there's no wind, so hmm. I went down to where the uh, 
bar scat was last time I was here. I didn't see any tracks, and of course, you know, the bar scat, it's already gone. It's rained it out and rotted it away. Uh, I've not really seen no fresh sign that uh, Bigfoot's been through here, but that don't mean anything. The ground's pretty hard, so unless I can find a track around one of these little streams or creeks, it uh, might be difficult. I am going to uh, go explore a new direction. People don't realize just how vast this is in here. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of acres. And there's no houses. I mean, it's miles and miles to the next house. Or to a house, not the next to a house. So This is what Bigfoot research is all about, though. you got to get out in the mountains. There's no, as you can see around in here, there's no, this is not a... Uh, a walked area or a uh, a marked trail or anything like that. This is out in nothing. So I'm gonna go up here maybe where there's an old logging road where they logged maybe 40 or 50 years ago and uh, maybe travel hit a little bit. It's a beautiful country in here for sure. I just wish I could Find some Bigfoot stuff. Outings like today, where I know I'm in an area where Bigfoot has been seen, uh, where I found evidence myself, and then you come out on a day like today, good temperatures, sweating some, but it ain't too bad. And, uh, and it seemed like I just can't find anything. I'm just going to rest a few minutes and I'm going to keep looking. As I was walking along, I, I looked up on the hill and I spotted this thing here. Uh, I could just see the very top of it and I thought, you know, that looks kind of interesting. So I made a trek up the hill to come up here and check it out. And it is, it's kind of unusual. Uh, it could just be, a, you know, a deadfall, but I know there's evidence of Bigfoot doing the same type of thing. I've not even went over to it yet, it's as close as I've got, but I'm going to ease over to it and look around. Like I say, I've never really explored this side, but uh, maybe there's uh, maybe there's something here. I'm trying to find some, uh, if there's any kind of tracks or whatever. I don't see anything, but you know, the ground's pretty hard. No. Some people might argue, well, this was just uh, some people in here fooling around and stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you, this is, there's nobody, there's much miles to a house. And this is uh, probably a, a mile or two back hiking in the mountains. So, so the chances of it being done by a kid are, are pretty slim. It could be natural natural fall or something but yeah, I find it interesting and I'm just going to keep looking around so what's that white thing way back there check that out well well I made it up to where the uh, big shiny white thing is it actually tree bark the way the light was hitting it I couldn't tell what it was I'd rather come and check it out than, than walk off and leave it and it'd be something important but that was a big tree it fell big hemlock 
Oh man, it's hard to walk up this hill. I'll turn around and give you a little look. That's uh, pretty steep. May not look it to you all, but you go dragging 300 pounds of it. <sighs> It'll make you huff. There is a possible old tree break. Don't know for sure, but something broke it. Now, to me, this is a good area. Uh, I mean, a good Bigfoot area, so. This is, for, I've only traveled maybe a, uh, I took my time, so probably a couple miles from where the X and I found all the tracks and stuff like that. So still in the you know general area. I'm gonna look around a little bit more. Uh, I got a couple interesting things here. There looks like possibly an old break. Maybe nothing to it, I don't know. But notice these trees. Now I don't know. Maybe that's a natural thing. I don't know. Seems kind of weird to me. I kind of like it. It's kind of neat. Hmm. I found this old jug. And you can see, looks like teeth marks on the side where it punctured it. Uh, that was probably some kind of a old oil container, possibly like cooking oil like you use at a restaurant. And I guess the old bear chewed in the hit to get a little taste of that too. I don't know where it's getting it from or where it got that stuff at, but oh well. I do see something else interesting. I'm going to go. I'm going to make my way to it. I'll show it to you. Them rocks are unusually stacked. I'm going to go check them and see if it's natural or uh, <clears throat> man-made or what. I guess maybe we won't be able to determine, but we get to look at them anyway. Here's that pile of rocks. Uh, it could be natural, I guess. I don't know. But they look like they've been placed on there to me. Human, Bigfoot. Loggers, surveyors, Indians, I don't know. This I don't know, seems out of place that they all piled up right here. Oh well, something else to think about, I guess. After several hours of hiking, Thomas decides to call it a day. But first, one quick look in an area he has not explored since the 2013 sightings. I've not really been on this side since the actual sighting that my dad had. This is the, the direction that the Bigfoot went. Uh, we did find tracks and stuff in here before when, when it actually happened, you know, a few days later, but this is the first time I've been back on this side since then, so I'm gonna look around a little bit. It's kind of limited how far you can go because you get right up against a, a mountain that's really, really steep. And, I don't know if a man wants to try to tackle that or not. After returning home, Thomas reviews the images and videos from the game cameras. Game cameras can be very useful tools in the effort to document Bigfoot. Not only are they used in the hopes of capturing an image of Bigfoot, but they also provide information about other animals living in the area as well. An area with a diversity of animals would seem to be a more suitable living environment for a creature such as Bigfoot. After all, an ample food supply is a priority for all creatures including Bigfoot. 
This particular round of game camera photographs and videos did not provide any evidence of a Bigfoot. But in 2013, Thomas was able to capture an image of what he believes to be a Bigfoot. Before I get to the photo of the Bigfoot, let me first tell you that the date on the game cam is off. It was a new game cam and it was the first time I was actually using it. I do not know the exact date, but it was sometime in late August of 2013. Let's start with a photo before the photo of the Bigfoot. I just recently noticed this and here it is. here is the photo before the actual photo of the Bigfoot. There appears to have been something very close to the camera, to the game cam. Uh, remember this was a fresh sighting area. The witness was my father, my skeptical father at the time. And I also want you to notice on this photo, photo that it was before the Bigfoot photo notice the timestamp it's 306 a.m. now let's look at the next photo uh, this is actually of the Bigfoot it was a little overexposed I've circled the Bigfoot please notice the timestamp 308 a.m. just two minutes after the other the previous photo I have some enhancements and comparison photos uh, I want to share with you as well. First here is a negative effect to the photo. And here is a zoom. Of course it uh, pixels out some because of these are low-end game cameras. Please, please notice the uh, head, the cheekbones, uh, part of the right arm, some of the figure is hid behind the leaves on the uh, smaller trees. Here I have attempted to uh, color the figure to make it stand out more. Then in the next photo I colored the surrounding trees with green. Uh, let's look at the zoomed in photo again. Here is a negative of that, a negative effect of it. To show you that's actually there. Now let's compare, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, here, here I am on the right, daytime photo. The yellow circle behind me is where the Bigfoot is on the left half of the picture. Thomas now attempts to return to the exact location where the images were obtained. maybe where that game camera was set when I mean slightly back this way maybe I don't know I'm gonna take a few shots right here and see 
Try to match them up later. Seems like it might have should have been more like this. Changed so much, it's hard to say. Oops, thought that was a snake, but it's not. It wouldn't have been here. I'm pretty sure that's still somewhere right in here. Maybe it's a liar. Thomas compares the area with the game camera photograph from 2013. By using the split in the tree bark of the larger tree, Thomas was able to confirm this spot as being the exact area where the 2013 game camera photograph of Bigfoot was taken. He uses a series of overlays to confirm this spot. Thomas and his son return to the area to conduct some reenactments in the hopes of gathering more details about the figure in the 2013 photograph. Spider. Right there. Okay. You got it, which is what you Bring it up now. I hope you never. I did it down just a little. Move right, your hand, let me see. Bring you all up a little bit more. Okay, right there. Hope you. I'm gonna go try to get where it was at. Okay. Okay. Now we know. We know it was here. There's two trees and a dark tree. Right. Yeah. Camera, I'm trying not to, Arthur. Barely. Barely. I can't. No, oh, now I can see you. That's killer on the arms. <laughs> now, I'm <laughs> now you go out there and stand. I'm gonna. I'll get you because then you're about the same size. So I'm a little taller than you. Now, that way, in case you messed up on this fancy camera work. All right, keep on going straight. Keep on going straight. All right, right there. All right. Step back about, uh, step back that way to your, uh, yeah, back behind you. And just kind of peek around that, your trees right in there. Turn to your, turn to your, uh, where your right shoulder's kind of facing me. Good. You step forward, one good step. There you go. I'm pretty sure that's where it was at. I'm pretty sure. 
uh, step back that way a little bit. It might have been behind that log right there. Step right over it behind that log. Watch for a snake, though. And now come right in front of that, uh, right there. Right now, look at me. Man, it's hard to see you there. But now the lighting was, well, that was, I think it was taken at night, so. Okay. All right, that'll do. That'll be able to let me match it up. I hope. And we said this uh, tree right here in front of us, this big one, was about 16 inches across. Several still frames were taken from the reenactment video. These frames were then compared to the original photograph from 2013. After picking the best reenactment photo, more comparisons were made with the original photograph. Some details start to emerge. After studying the reenactment photos, frame number 7 was selected as being the one closest to the original 2013 photograph. The two photographs were then compared side by side. Finally, three reference points were selected to help match up the two photographs. Matching up the two photographs should provide more details about the figure. Reference number one was the split in the larger tree in the foreground. It is clearly visible in both photographs. Reference number two is the log laying on the left side of the frame. Reference number three is the thin tree that has a distinct limb pointing to the right, slightly left of center. Slowly, a small section at a time is cut out of frame number 7 and placed over the 2013 photograph. Carefully, each cut is aligned to the original picture. By doing this, we will be able to determine if Thomas is standing in the exact spot as a figure in the 2013 photograph. As the pieces come together, some details become more clear about the figure. It appears the figure is standing farther back than Thomas is. Thomas does appear to be about the same size as the figure. Knowing that Thomas's height is over six feet, this helps us to make a conclusion to the overall height of the figure. While we cannot determine the exact height of the figure, we can confirm that the figure is over 6 feet tall and probably not over 7 feet tall. The figure is a few feet back farther than Thomas. This results in the figure appearing slightly shorter than him. The figure is approximately 65 feet from the camera. While the figure and Thomas do appear similar, the body proportions of the figure do not seem to be that of a human. The head seems larger, the cheekbones higher, the arm longer, and the legs thicker. Some suggest that this is nothing more than a stump, but it does not appear in any other photographs. Others suggest it was a bear, but the only species of bear in this area is the black bear. A standing black bear only reaches a height of about five feet. There is no visible snout or ears on the figure. We are left with the conclusion that the figure is a Bigfoot, standing over six feet, but not over seven feet tall. The height conclusion would also seem to correlate with the numerous tracks found in the area. The average length of the tracks have been 13 to 14 inches long. Although not scientific, studies suggest that a person's height is normally about half their shoe size. For example, a study by Courtney Pearson in 2013 of 199 people suggests that people with a shoe size of 13 would most likely be just over 6 feet tall. Over the following months, Thomas continued to research the area. 
He used a variety of game cameras and other techniques in attempts to document Bigfoot. He spent countless hours and walked endless miles searching for evidence of the creature. Trace evidence such as tracks and tree breaks were documented routinely. Here's a little something unusual. Kind of interesting. I kind of like it. Whether Mother Nature did it or or uh, Bigfoot, it's still some unusual to find. That's a fairly fresh tree break of some sort. That looks like it's about yeah, almost almost six foot high, but oh, it's no trash. Of course, it's dry, but you kind of have to wonder what did that. I wouldn't think it was the wind. Just got this one tree, this one little tree, in amongst these other big ones. Oh. It's all right though. No, well, look, it's too old. All right, on up the hill. Okay, two little things of interest here. I don't know if you can see that in front of me. There's a tree break right there. That's pretty high up. That's over. Uh, that's over six foot high. Well, if you come right over here. There's another one. And we'll see how high he is. You can see right here, it's six, about six foot high as well. They're both broke, pointing that direction. Well, you may ask, well, what's in that direction? There's a pretty good sized creek in that direction. It's got fish in it. It's good water to drink. And, uh, so maybe the, could that possibly be what these represent? That that way is where a water source is. I don't. I'm not for sure, but that's uh, you know it's possible, I suppose. There's a bone of some sort. I'm just guessing. I would say it's probably a deer. Just a guessing. I don't really know. It looks like a little bit of knee joint or something. Huh. Just leave that right there. I don't see any other one, so I, just, I found what could possibly be a track. I don't know if you can see that, but that would be the toes. Comes back, man. It's pretty good size. You can see the edge right there, like the foot, the toes. The sleeves fell on it, so maybe they stepped on that. I ain't for sure. <clears throat> but that sure looks like a track. For comparison, I wore a 13. You can see how big that is. I'll look around, see if I can find another one or two. Hard to say just on one for sure, but that's what it looks like. And it's consistent with the sizes I found in here before, it looks like. Okay guys, I have found something. They're old, but I'm pretty sure this is a track. See this right here? Can you see that? I hope you can see that. The next step is, well, it's bigger than my step. I'll, even though the track is about the size of my foot. Ouch. I can't, I can't make it to the next step. There's the next step. Here's the first step. Let's see right here. Let me show you. Right here. Here's the heel. Here's the heel. 
and the uh, worth of toes would be. Then the next step, whoops, my water fell out. The next step was all the way over here. And that is, uh, that's too far for me. Now where did the next one go? I don't know. Man, that's a long step. That's more than a three foot stride. That's probably a four or five foot stride. There to over the, over there. Now let's see if we can see where the next one went. It was old now, it's, it's rained on those. Wow. I wish I could have found that when it was first uh, a little fresher or something. I don't see where the next track goes to, but if it hit on this rock, that's why. After looking around for those tracks, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find another track there, but that was farther apart. The tracks were farther apart than what I could stretch and do. So the likelihood that it was done by me is slim, and I'm, I'm a pretty good sized guy. Uh, I'm like almost 6'4", and that was a big stride, you know. And I stretched, and I still couldn't reach it. So, so I'm gonna head back the other way. Had her take it. No, it's standing here. But had her drink my other water. This one here hasn't been opened yet. And uh, see what else we can find. So far, that's that's good, Daryl. I, I wished I could have uh, found it a little fresher. I would have. I got my casting material with me. Makes the backpack heavy, but oh well. I would like to cast that track. All right. All right, the uh, game cam is set up. Number, I guess I call it number one for now. And the reason I chose this area is because it's so flat, you can see so far. And also that there's quite a few deer tracks to here. So if there's deer tracks, there stands a chance there'll be other game as well. Right, let me find a place to set this second one up. Okay, this is the second game cam. And what I normally do, since I'm up on a hill a little bit and I want to shoot down, I'll put me a, a stick in behind it, kind of make it angled down a little bit. And what, I, what else I normally do, I'll put one face in this direction, and then somewhere on the other side I'll put one facing back this way. And that has a, a dual purpose for me. Uh, one of the purposes I do it is in case let's just say a Bigfoot for example sees one camp he may try to go in the other direction and if he does maybe I got him maybe I can cross him up and another thing I do it for is in case somebody steals my game camps if somebody comes and steals this one I, most likely I'll catch him on the other one and uh, there's a good chance I might know who it is and if not I could always post it on the internet but uh, make sure this is working. Yep, it's working. But I want to show you something else too. Look how those one limbs to the left are leaning. Now I know there's a lot of dead fall in here from the wind, but that just seems odd to me. I'm gonna walk up here and check it out a little bit. Here that is from the back side. I guess it's just uh, where these blowdowns has caught them. And, knocked them over but uh, it takes time to learn about these structures and things and what's done by nature and what could possibly be done by a human or a person or, or a Bigfoot or whatever now this is a uh, bear track it's a double step which makes it look kind of like a small foot but it is a bear. Here is another one of them right here. I can see it. Okay. I'm going to show you something. And it may not seem like nothing to you. I see this stick. Now that is thoroughly jabbed down into the ground. It don't have no roots or anything like that. And this ground is really, really hard. 
And I've felt this over and over and over in Bigfoot sighting areas. And uh, just to see if I can show you. I'm just going to grab this. See if I can get on it. There's just no way. This ground is so hard. There's just no way. No way. That fell and stuck in there. See, I can't even get it back in there, in there now. I've got it, but it ain't like it was. Now, I found this type of uh, stick behavior, I guess you want to call it that, repeatedly in Bigfoot areas. And as you can look above me, there's a pine tree above me. So the chances of that falling and sticking there are really, really slim. Now, why does Bigfoot jab them down in the ground like that? I don't know. But uh, that is something to look for that I have found to be an authentic behavior in Bigfoot sighting areas. Don't know what it means, but uh, I found it many times. Just wanted to share that with you a little bit. Now this is close to that stick that was jabbed in the ground. I don't know, let me see, it's probably uh, 40 feet. And this old top's twisted off. And most likely nothing that the wind had done. But there are certain things that's, that are consistent in Bigfoot sighting areas. And that is two of the things you'll find broken tops like that and you'll find sticks jabbed in the ground. I found another X. Now it could be totally random, I don't know, but uh, I don't know why it would be. If the wind was blowing one direction, you'd think it'd both fall the same direction. But it's kind of interesting. I wanted to share it with you anyway. Okay. I'm pretty close to getting back out of here. And uh, I want to talk just a few minutes on uh, stick structures. Uh, it takes a long time and it takes a lot of time out into the out in the forest to realize what is uh, potentially natural and what is potentially unnatural when it comes to stick structures and uh, deadfalls and things like that. Uh, what helped me in some of this, other than having you know been out in the woods a lot for for a pretty good while, I was uh, I logged and. Uh, when they cut a tree and tree falls and tears up everything, you get an idea of how how things can lay and land and and that was helpful for me in uh, in determining what might be natural, what be you know what might be unnatural or created by Bigfoot. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who put uh, absolutely no stock in stick structures. And then there's some who are really overzealous and everything. They, every time they find a twig land funny, they think it's a Bigfoot. But, but uh, I, I do know that they do things with sticks. Uh, but there's people out there that know a lot more about them than, than I do and what they do with them. But, uh, but let's, not, let's not discount all stick formations because we got a few people who's a little overzealous and uh, want to claim everything's done by Bigfoot. On one eventful day, Thomas was able to record possible tree knocks coming from a remote area. You see all these turkey scratches, I don't know if you can see them. And right now I'm hearing some knocking. On the side of that mountain over there. Let me back away from this creek, maybe we can hear it better. Hear it? I don't know what it would be. 
because there's nothing down through there. The closest thing there is a is the uh, is a cemetery, and it's way back. You gotta basically have a four wheel drive to get back there to it. Get back on up Western Street. Maybe you can hear it even better. it is it sounds like it's hitting pretty heavy huh, stop I can't hear no voices or anything talking so I've got my knocker in my backpack, but I don't want to take it off. Let me get just a stick and see. I need something decent. I don't know. We'll find out, maybe. is hitting heavy too. No. If I'm not mistaken, that's the first time I've ever heard that many knocks that I really didn't know what it was. There it goes. Wow. Wow, let me see if I can find another stick. Alright, it's still going. Eventually, the sounds stopped. Just what was making the sounds remains a mystery. With over two years of research in this area, the evidence list keeps growing. Three sightings, over 30 tracks, numerous tree breaks and structures, unknown wood knock sounds, unknown vocals, and a game camera photograph. There have also been a few occasions of short howls being heard by Thomas, but unfortunately he was unable to record them. The activity in the area is still continuing. The research efforts are still ongoing. The creature we call Bigfoot is still being tracked. I guess some people wonder why I do this or, or maybe for something wrong with me I suppose but uh, I don't do it to try to prove it to the, try to prove Bigfoot to the world but I've had a couple of encounters myself my first one when I was a 15 year old and uh, had a visual just a couple a couple winters ago and I don't do this to try to prove it to the mass public or anything I do it to find out more about the creature myself and uh, you know of course by now I, I'm, I know for sure that it's 100% real and uh, 
I'm just trying to do what I can to share with like-minded people and those who are really truly interested, not those that are just into it to make fun of people or whatever. But I guess I figure I only got so much time I'll be able to do Bigfoot in the way I do it now because I go into some pretty steep and rough areas and a lot of people I guess just couldn't do it. And I guess the day will come when I couldn't do it. But uh, between now and then I'm going to I'm going to do my best to try to find out a little bit more about these things. I enjoy it, but, but like I say, I guess I got limited time on one, you know, how long I'm going to be able to lug these mountains up and down. Just thankful for what time I got now. <laughs>